Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and salam sejahtera. Hi everyone. So I would like to proceed with members of company. Uh, we have a brief uh, explanation to each slides. Okay. We will cover who is a member, what's different between member and shareholder, who cannot be a member, what are the rights of members, what are the duties of members, and how to protect the minority shareholder. Okay. Right. And now, uh, as usual, the slides normally is the continuation of the online class. Uh, due to some issues with internet because students are using data some students cannot uh, really focus on online that's why we have slides right so who can be a member of company right um, you see the first one who be the member of the company is the person who incorporated the company the subscriber of companies okay the one whose name is mentioned in the constitution. Uh, this is in pursuant to section 18, subsection 2. This person is the member of the company. Who can be? The subscriber is the member of company. Right? When a company is incorporated, the person who incorporates it usually is the member of the company because his name is in the application form. Of course, the member would apply to incorporate a company. Right? How can a non-member actually go and apply to CCM to incorporate a company? It doesn't make sense, right? So it is the member, and the name of the member is mentioned as the subscriber in the constitution of the company, right? Right. And who is the member again? Member of a company is the persons members. Is the persons whose name entered in the company's register of member, right? This is uh, provided by section 50, subsection 3, section 101 and 147 of the Companies Act, right? Whose name entered in the company's register of members. Um, this is what I took from internet. That's why I did not allow you to reproduce or upload in somewhere else my slides for lecture or video. I didn't allow, alright? Um, so, register of members, right? You see here, they have the name of the members and correspondence address and the membership class. In this case, and you can have a look at the column number two, the membership class is the ordinary um, shares. So, membership class ordinary, right? Membership guarantee, right? Now, uh, this is sample of register of members. So whose name mentioned or written in the register of members or shall I say registered in the register of members, those persons are the members of the company. Okay. So when a person buys share basically, right, the moment they buy share, they become shareholder, their name will be registered in the register of members. That's how this person who purchases share or shareholders become members, right? Membership, yeah? And, you know, when you have club at the university or association, whatever, whoever want to be membership, they need to register their name, right? You have a register book, isn't it? So, similar, all right? Similar. We have register of members, right? A person only becomes a member of a company when his name is entered in the company's register of members. Okay, this is clear, isn't it? Right now, what if a person buys shares but does not register as member? What happened? I purchase the share of your company, but my name is not in the register of member. Am I a member or no? Right. Second question. What if a person buys shares but register other person as the members? Again, I, you have a company, a big one, huge one. I'm interested to be the shareholders, uh, to invest in your company, so I purchase shares from your company. But I did not actually uh, use my name. I register my proxy name, all right? my nominee. All right. So I asked my nominee, Natra, okay, 
to do whatever I supposed to do as a member. So she is my nominee and I register her names. Am I a member or am I not a member? In both situation, right? I am not a member. I'm very unfortunate, right? Why? Because my name is not actually registered in the register of member in the registry. My name is not there. So I'm not a member. I'm not considered as member, right? Why? Because you see I put it there, put it, put it here, such person is not entitled to become the member of company. Right? A person is only considered as member when he register his name in the member of the company. When his name is being registered in the registry of member of that particular company. Right. Uh, number three. Directors who have undertaken to take and pay their shares qualification. Right. What does it mean by shares qualification? When we say shares qualification, that means the directors, if they want to be a director in a particular company, the company, company required them to purchase share. This is what we call as qualifying shares. All right? So, these directors is required to own the shares. I make some notes here on your right. A share of common stock that a candidate for a company board of directors, BOD, is required to own. Okay. Basically, it doesn't, uh, qualifying shares doesn't say that this share is different than ordinary share. No. It is just a requirement that these directors need to own. All right. The requirement that the directors need to purchase the share and own the share before they can come become a directors, or if they become a directors, um, they need to purchase. They might not pay yet, so they have unpaid shares, but still they need to purchase, right? Some companies require yeah, the directors to take some shares for them to become directors. So, you know, directors, sometimes they are members of the company because they are the shareholders of the company. Right? Uh, sometimes. Uh, and if there is not a requirement, director not necessarily a shareholder or members of the company. Okay, this is, as I said, qualifying shares. For example, I'll give an example here. For example, a person must have 20% of shares in order to become the members. Who cannot become a member? The company itself. The company is not allowed to buy back its shares, right? Under section 1, 2, 3, subsection 1, unless it is a public listed company or redeemable preference shares. So, company cannot own it, own it, buy its own shares. So, a company cannot be a member for, for its company. It sounds weird now. Okay. Right, company A, company A, let's say, company A cannot purchase its own shares. So, company A cannot be the member of company A. Uh, that's what I mean, right. So, we move further rather than confusing ourselves. The subsidiary company, section 2, 22, subsection 1, right. Subsidiary company cannot be a shareholder for the holding company, all right. Subsidiary company, right? However, the parent company can become the members of the subsidiary company. So, subsidiary is uh, this is provided under section 22, subsection 1. Have a look at the company side, all right? But the parent company can be the members of its subsidiary companies, all right? So, if the parent company, um, which means the parent company holds shares in the subsidiary company. What are the rights of members? Okay, we have discussed earlier in detail, so we just go. Uh, right to vote in meeting, receive notice of meeting of members. Uh, this is provided by the statute, section 101, subsection 2, subsection B, and section 321, subsection 1. Okay, can receive dividend, section 101, subsection 2, subsection 3, C. Okay, can question. Rights of members can question, discuss, comment, and make recommendation on the management. Section 195, uh, uh, sorry, 195, all right? So, members, they can question the management 
basically the members can question the directors board of directors they can question right this is the members right can appoint another person as proxy to represent him in meeting as i said i can uh, appoint a, pro a proxy right this is pursuant to section 334 uh, and members can take action against the directors if the directors oppress them section 346 okay duties of members in company unlimited liability right the members are liable for the debts of course it, it is unlimited liability do you remember our first or second lecture about this all right so the members must pay the debts incurred by the company limited liability their liability only limited steward the unpaid shares okay when you have unpaid shares you purchase shares you haven't paid fully paid unpaid shares is debt towards the company so that's your liability on the other hand the members in companies in limited by guarantee okay now limited by guarantee if you remember this company normally for religious purpose recreation purpose so you know this uh, the the members give guarantee if the company is going to be wound up or they want to go for winding up of company the the, the members will give certain amount okay guarantee for 1 million for example they have X, Y, Z form for religious purpose and the members give guarantee if this X, Y, Z going for winding up we guarantee to give 1 million okay this is the only liability for the members and this is the duty of members to do so okay the members are liable to pay now we go for the operation remedy under section 346 okay Remedy given to members who has been oppressed or a member who feel like he is being oppressed by the directors, by the company or by the decision of directors, he can go to court and ask for remedy under section 346. Okay. Basically, a member can take action against the directors. All right. If the member has been oppressed. All right. Or when the directors make decision that breach the member's right. So member now being oppressed. Okay. So they can go to court and uh, ask for remedy for the oppression, oppression done by the directors. Okay. Now difference between derivative action and oppression remedy. Derivative action we have learned earlier under proper plaintiff rules. Earlier, we learned about proper plant, plaintiff rule. Okay, I need to explain to you so that you have a, a, a clear picture on these two remedy. Proper plaintiff rules. All right. Uh, if you remember that a, a, under proper plaintiff rule, the proper plaintiff is the company itself. All right. If there is any misappropriation of the company's asset, or for example, the directors. Um, sell the asset of the company uh, with bad intention or cost losses to for their own benefit something wrong okay so the company is the correct party to proceed with suing the directors suing the wrongdoer okay this is the rule of proper plaintiff rule okay so when the company has been damaged by the directors, the company is the party that should sue the directors. That's what it means. Okay, we have company here, members and wrongful directors. So it is said that the members cannot sue on behalf of the company. Members cannot sue the wrongful directors on behalf of the company under proper plaintiff rules, but the company must sue the directors by itself. But it doesn't make sense. Why? Because company who actually make decision. It is the directors, right? So we have some issue here. Okay, would the director actually sue themselves for making uh, for misappropriate the company's asset? Definitely, nobody want to sue themselves, isn't it? You see, the director is the one who makes the decision. They will not sue themselves, right? So after that, we have that. That's the general rule. If you remember, we have exception, exception. Okay, statutory exception or uh, common law exception two exceptions right 
So the law provides exception, that is the derivative action, right? Where the members are able to take action on behalf of the company against the director. Under derivative action, the members are allowed to sue the directors on behalf of the company. So this is derivative action. Now, under this topic, right? Operation remedy. Okay, the remedy uh, for members, yeah? Or we also call it members remedy okay this is different the members did not sue the, the wrongful directors on behalf of the company the members sue wrongful directors on their own capacity for their own good for the wrong done by the directors to themselves not on behalf of the company this is the different okay so uh, the members sue the directors because they have been oppressed by the directors, okay, under operation remedy, right. Therefore, under operation remedy, the members do not sue directors on behalf of the company, but sue directors on their own capacity or initiative. We have examples for operation conducts. We have operation in diverting our business to other companies. This is illustrated in case Scottish Cooperative Wholesale Society and Mayors. Operation due to mismanagement. Uh, in case Ng Chi Kyong operation in non declaration of dividend, in the case of Ri Gi Ho Chan trading, operation in denying the members to attend meeting for voting, I will explain. And operation uh, under the, the case of Chao Cho Wo Ching. And uh, the last one is operation in reducing voting rights. This is Kokotovich Constructions and Wellington. Okay, now we go for operation in diverting the business to other company. You say before we go to the uh, to the case. Okay, if a company, right, um, used to get profit, right, and after somehow sometimes the director make decision to divert the business, right, to other companies, right. This is considered as operations towards the members, right? Why? Because one, the business is being diverted, definitely the profit will, uh, the profit made it will be lesser. So when there is lesser profit, the benefit gained by the members is also lesser. Okay, right. So in Scottish Cooperative Wholesale Society and Mayors, you can see the diagram that I we made here. Scottish Co-op Cooperative supply clothes to Scottish Textile. Right. Scottish Co-op and Mayors, yeah, they are both shareholders to Scottish Textile. Okay. And Scottish Co-op supply clothes to Scottish Textile. And then Scottish Textile supplies the clothes to market. Right now, uh, you can see the percentage of the shareholdings by both uh, shareholders. Okay, uh, after sometimes the relationship of Scottish Co and mayors uh, becomes sour, turns sour, all right, or bitter, or whatever you want to call it, it's not good anymore. So, what Scottish Co op did, the Scottish Co op decided to supply clothes to other company, right. When the Scottish Co started to do that, the result was Scottish Textile, which used to supply clothes to market and get um, making profit of that, right? The profit dropped. Scottish Textile profit dropped, right? So now, Mayor sued Scottish Co op for oppression of members. So now, Mayor sued Scottish Co op. Why? Because by Scottish Co-op decision, it caused the profit drop. Okay? And, uh, sorry, it caused, yeah, it become unprofitable and the share value drop. It caused the share value drop. Okay? And Mayor, when Mayor go to court, right, he uh, contended that because of this action done by Scottish Co-op, the share value drop. And it become unprofitable. So this is oppression against him. Okay. So the court held that there was oppression. 
as the director purposely diverted the business to other companies in order to cause loss to Mayer. Because Mayer is the shareholder, now the value of share drop and it become unprofitable, right? So it caused damage to Mayer. So this is done purposely by the directors that is Scottish co -op. So this is considered as, as what? As, uh, this is considered as oppression. My niece. Eng Chi Kyung and Eng Tiong Kiat Highland. Highland. Operation due to mismanagement. Okay. In this case, the company owned a tea plantation. So basically, when the shareholders uh, purchase the share, the company is making profit through tea plantation business. Right. After sometimes the directors abandoned and neglected the tea plantation. Uh, once the uh, tea plantation was neglected, okay, the government see that this tea plantation neglected. The government took back the abandoned plantation, right? When uh, the government took back, so there will be no more tea plantation, right? When there's no more tea plantation, no more plantation, no more business. No, nothing after that, isn't it? So it caused loss to the members. The members sue the directors because due to the mismanagement, the neglect of the directors, the directors caused oppression towards the members. Okay, the court held that there was oppression. The court agreed with the members, okay, because the director had neglected the affairs of the company and caused loss to the members. So this is a of an oppression case. Okay. We have some other uh, example for mismanagement. Okay. Uh, for example, directors make company to enter into contract with the company that involved with fraud or scam activity. Uh, the directors did not do background checking. The directors just entered into contract with any company. Now we have so many scam activities from uh, overseas, right? We got scared already. Okay, it's not just um, sometimes uh, even in Facebook also you see uh, handsome face, but actually not that person. They use the uh, face, uh, the the picture of that person. Okay, and so does with business. So many scam activities. So directors did not make further checking. Being a, a person who will be future director, yeah, right? So you have to take care of this, right? Don't make, simply join any activities without making further checking. Details checking, right? Do not enter into contract, right? Uh, without making any background checking, right? Number two, directors makes company to avoid from paying taxes. This is totally wrong, okay? We have to pay tax, all right? This is provided by law, okay? This is our duty for us to pay tax. So, do not avoid paying tax, okay? This is a mismanagement, all right? Directors makes company to contravene with law, all right? So, directors actually, when the directors make decision, how does it happen, yeah? Directors the one who make decision, all right? Who is the head of the company? Can you see a head of company? You cannot see, right? Hand of company, you see? No, you can't. So, there are these board of directors. So, when the board of directors make decision that contravene with the law, so the company actually become go against the law, right? So, this is management of directors, right? And when mismanagement happen, right? The consequence is what? Operations towards the shareholders, the members. It become operation towards the members. Okay. In re gi ho chan trading, right? Operation in non declaration of dividend. We discussed this earlier before. So basically, in this case, right? Uh, let's go for the let us go for the general rule. I repeat myself, right? Already tell you earlier, share with you earlier that generally a company company is not bound to pay dividend if to the members shareholders if the company is making loss with no reserve and the company or the company did not make profit right we have discussed earlier that for a directors to declare profit to give profit the directors must make sure that the company is solvent within 12 months 
following section 112. Remember? Right. The company must be solvent. The, what does it mean by solvent? The, it means that the company will be able to pay the creditors within 12 months. Okay. General rule. What about a company who makes profit? Continuously make profit. So in this case, the company make profits. Alright. The company make profits and then continuously making profit. And the directors got the payment that they supposed to get. Okay, they got paid, they got the advantages, the benefit, but they never declare dividends. So only they enjoy the profit. Basically, the members is not does has no chance to enjoy the profit through dividend. Right. So the members is not happy, they go to court, they say that this is operation. After many years making profit, the directors never declare dividend. The court agree with the members. The court held that the non-declaration of dividend was operation to the members. So the court agree this is part of um, operation. Chow Wo Ching and Chow Wo Chi. Operation in denying the members to attend meeting. Okay. If the directors deny members right to attend meeting or deny members right to vote this is operation against the members okay so in this case the court held that there was operation because the directors denies the members to attend meeting for voting how they do how they do how okay how to deny by not giving them notice to attend so they don't have notice they didn't get notice they didn't come or the directors purposely schedule meeting at the time when the, the, the members cannot come. Okay? So, this is denying the members to attend meeting. We have Kokotovich Construction and Wallington. Operation in reducing the voting rights. If any of the directors reduce any of the member voting rights, okay? This is also oppression. We have this direct... Uh, in this case, K, Kokotovich is the director and shareholders and W is a shareholder only, right? So basically, W just give money, so whole shares. K is the one who handle with the company because he's the director, he makes decision, whatever, right? Both of them are shareholder for Kokotovich construction. In this case, right? You see? The relationship is not good anymore. Previously, when they join, they are happy. So, happily, they come and they form a company. Most cases happen this way, you know. Issues occur when the partners are not happy anymore with each other. And, uh, you see, in this case, what, the, uh, what K did was, he issued additional share to himself. Why? Because he wants to reduce the rights of voting of w when w's right of voting reduced means only his decision will be uh, will take place he has more right voting rights okay so now w feel that he is being oppressed by k so w sued k for oppression the court held that hi yasmin hi come 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 Yes, come, come and join me. The court held that there was oppression as K had bad motive to reduce the voting rights of W by issuing additional shares to him. So this is illustration for or K supporting oppressions against the members. Okay. Remedies for oppression. Now we know that there are many ways that oppression can happen towards the members. Towards members. Okay. Then what should the member do? The member go to court. When the member go to court, what they want? They want remedy. So what can it be? The remedies for oppression. Uh, remedies for oppression provided under section 3, 4, 6, subsection 2. Right? If the person go to court and claim that he has been oppressed, okay, the court will check whether there are any oppression happen, existence of oppression. 
when the court found there is existence of oppression by directors to the members, the court can, there are few things that the court can uh, order, yeah? give, grant to the uh, member. First, direct or prohibit the wrongful act. Immediately, direct the directors to do something or prohibit the wrongful act. Whatever the directors are doing, stop it there and then. Okay. Cancel or vary the transaction or resolutions. All right. If there is true resolution or tra a transaction, the court can cancel it or amend it. Right. Regulate the conduct of the company's affair. Now, the court will interfere. The court will regulate the conduct of the company's affair so that the members will not be oppressed by uh, the directors anymore. Or the court may order other members to purchase the shares of the affected minority. If there are any... Because maybe in certain decisions made by the directors, the directors made decision, all right? Certain decision. The majority is not being affected, but the minority is being affected. This minority feel that, oh, because of this decision, we are being oppressed. So they go to court and ask for remedy. Since they are the minority, they are being affected, right? The majority is not being affected. The court can ask other members purchase these affected minority shares. Okay, release them. So they are not the shareholders anymore. They are not the members anymore. They can go and be members in some other company. Right? This is a, this can be a remedy. Okay. And lastly, wind up the company. Okay. If nothing can be done anymore, so the court can give order to wind up the company. I guess that's all. Thank you very much. I hope you understand. Okay. Take care. Bye bye.